Hello, Keith Rucker here at VengeMachinery.org. Uh, I'm going to put together another odds and ends video for you guys this week, and I'm mostly going to be looking at some uh, viewer mail that's come in uh, the last week or so uh, since we put up a odds and ends video, and uh, it's starting to stack up. I need to get it out the door. I really was wanting to couple up this next video with another shop update. Unfortunately, uh, there's just really not anything to update you guys on, so uh, this is going to strictly be uh, viewer mail. Uh, so let's get at it. So first thing I want to mention in my last odds and ends, uh, I showed you guys this little, uh, Morse taper sleeve went from a number three to a number five Morse taper. And I talked about how, uh, I was a little bit confused when I saw it because it was shorter than a normal Morse taper sleeve. And, um, uh, I kind of made a mistake on this one and I'll admit it. Uh, and I should have known what this is because I actually have a few of them and it, I don't know why it just didn't click, but, uh, many of you guys out there corrected me on it, uh, told me what it was. And, uh, I just want to, uh, acknowledge that and also, uh, let you guys know. So what it is, is this, uh, it's actually a sleeve for holding a dead center in the spindle of a lathe. So you, in a, uh, on the lathe, you would have a, in the spindle, a larger Morse taper on many of them, and it would allow you to uh, get down to a smaller uh, dead center for turning on centers. And uh, that's what this uh, is. Uh, as you can see, I got an old one here with a center in it and a new one, uh, same size. Uh, Morse taper and um, anyway, I just wanted to make that correction and Acknowledge all of you guys out there uh, that called me out on it and uh, corrected me on it uh, And I appreciate that as well. Uh, just I just missed it Next item here is uh, not actually uh, The typical viewer mail and that someone sent me something in the mail But in this case, it's a viewer email and I get a lot of email from a lot of you guys and I appreciate all those I try real hard to respond to you, but uh, this one was kind of unique and I want to share it with you guys because it's an opportunity for you guys to be able to help out uh, someone. So I got this uh, note from Nathan Woodruff and Nathan is a high school student in uh, Mount Gambler, South Australia. And uh, Matthew has got a pretty um, neat project going and I'm just going to read you a little bit. Um, about what he's put he put here. He says, uh, I'm Nathan from Mount Gambler, South Af Australia, and I'm in current and I am currently in year 12 at school. Uh, we have to do a research project as a, as a, on a subject and uh, on one he's working on is how to construct a model steam engine. Um, and he, let's see, we, we need to gather research from a wide range of areas. And one of these areas that we have to do for the school project is to use surveys. And I thought you might be able to help me out if you could spend a few minutes filling out my survey and uh, possibly send it on to anyone else that you think might be able to help out. So Matthew has put together uh, three surveys that he is doing. Uh, they're online surveys uh, through SurveyMonkey, if you guys are familiar with that. Uh, you basically go to a website. Uh, and you answer a few questions. And uh, let's see, I, I, I actually did the surveys the other day. Uh, one of them is specifically about, do you prefer using high-speed steel or carbide with machining? So a lot of you guys out there, I know are machinists or hobby machinists, so you can go fill out that one and for sure and uh, give some feedback on them. And the other two surveys are more specific about building model steam engines. And I know that there are quite a few guys out there as well uh, who build model steam engines or maybe know a little bit about uh, steam engines and model steam engines. And I would encourage you to go fill those out too. So uh, through the power of YouTube, uh, let's uh, get all kinds of feedback to Nathan uh, on his project. I think that'd be really cool. Uh, for him to get hundreds, if not thousands of responses uh, from people all over the world. Uh, so I've got down in the, down below the video on YouTube in the description. So if you're watching this on full screen, when you go back down to regular screen in the description down below, I'm going to put links, uh, to the three survey monkey surveys and, uh, take a few minutes. It doesn't take, but just a few minutes. They're not very long. They will not take a lot of your time help out uh, Nathan uh, down in Australia, uh, get a good grade on his, uh, on his big project. And uh, he sent some pictures along of the steam engine kit that he's gonna be machining uh, for his project. And it ought to be a really interesting project as well. So there you go. Y'all go fill out those surveys for Nathan. 
So the next item here uh, comes from Neil, and uh, I don't have Neil's last name on his note that he wrote down, and I don't have his box out here in the shop that he sent it in, so I'm just gonna call you Neil. And uh, uh, he sent along, uh, and he, he contacted me ahead of time and told me he was gonna be sending me a mystery tool. So I'm always interested to see what's in the box when a mystery tool arrives. And uh, when I got the box, I was a little bit confused, Neil, at first. Um, he said, enclosed, find a mystery tool. I can't take credit for the design, uh, but I sure do enjoy using mine. Uh, be sure to evenly load the two set screws when installing. Hope you find yours useful. What is his mystery tool? Let me zoom you in on that. So what we have here is a uh, faucet handle. It's a universal faucet hammer uh, that has some set screws in here to tighten up on a faucet that's been stripped out that you may not be able to put a regular handle on. And when I thought of it, I said, what in the world? This isn't a mystery tool. I mean, it's obviously a faucet handle. But then he sent along a little picture and it all became clear. So, um, but, so what this is, is this actually, or what you can use it for, is you can put it on your hydraulic jack um, on, your, on a press uh, for the little release valve rather than having to use the handle every time and it makes a really nice handy um, Release valve to go on your hydraulic jack Brilliant idea and uh, I can't wait to put mine on so I did find it interesting uh, That tucked down inside the box here. There's a little warning tag um, It says this product contains a chemical known to the state of California to cause cancer and birth defects or other reproductive harm so it looks like a chunk of metal to me. I'm not sure what chemical, what dangerous chemical is in here to the state of California. So uh, every time I see one of those little tags, um, let's just say it makes me glad I don't live in California. I love California. It's a beautiful state. There's some great people out there. <sighs> There's some wackos out there too. Next box of goodies we got uh, came from Joe Tiller. And uh, Joe sent along a couple of items, first of which was this. And uh, he told me this was something that he had uh, that he thought I could use. And what is it? It's basically a ceramic uh, enclosure. Uh, it's open on one end, it's closed all around. And what it is for is uh, for using on a, a pyrometer uh, to be able to protect the actual pyrometer in a foundry situation. So I showed you guys the pyrometer uh, that was sent to me a week or two ago. And uh, basically what you do is you take this and you put it down inside this ceramic sleeve and it protects again uh, the thermocouple here. And this one is just a little bit too big. I'm gonna have to do a little grinding on it, I think. It'll, it's gonna go, but it's, it's, uh, it needs a little bit of work. Uh, not a big deal. I don't wanna force it on there right now. Uh, I'm going to do a little massaging uh, to get it to fit just right, uh, but that's going to be very nice uh, to be able to dip down in molten metal with my foundry and uh, get an accurate uh, temperature uh, of the metal so that I'll know when I'm ready to do my pour. Uh, so anyway, thanks Joe, that's very handy, but uh, in addition to that, he also sent along this little gizmo. And uh, some of you guys, I'm sure, know exactly what this is. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I did not. I mean, I could kind of figure out what it was to some extent. It's got a little protractor type gauge on here with an angle. And, uh, but I wasn't exactly sure how you use it. It's got some chalk on a little soapstone here uh, for down here. So it has a patent number on it. So I actually looked up the patent. I'll, I'll be honest, that's how I cheated to figure out what this is. So, and so what you can use it for is to mark an angle. Let me reset that camera. So what you can use it for is to mark an angle. And uh, I'm not sure I'm using this exactly right as far as holding it up over here. Um, uh, it may mount on something. I'm not exactly sure. You guys, Some of you guys may know, but you can basically come up around and a regular shape. Of course it helps if it stays still. And I, again, I'm probably not doing this exactly right, but go around um, around it there and basically scribe an angle 
onto so like a piece of round stop or stock uh, or a piece of tubing or something like that. So I need to practice with this. If some of you guys have some tips on how to use it, uh, I'd appreciate it. It looks like a handy little tool to have. Um, and again, it was something that uh, I've never even seen one before. So uh, very interesting. I think the patent on this uh, was issued back in the 1930s. Uh, so it's been around for quite a while. So Joe, thanks for the little uh, protractor tool here, as well as the ceramic uh, insert for the pyrometer. Both are going to come in handy. Uh, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. So my next item here is really pretty amazing. Uh, this comes from um, my buddy Joel, lives up uh, in uh, upstate New York. And uh, Joel has sent me some really, really nice stuff before. And uh, not to be outdone, uh, he sent along another really, really nice uh, care package here uh, for me a week or so ago. And uh, he told me, uh, Joel goes to a lot of swap meets and flea markets and what have you and what have you. And um, he stumbled across this for an incredibly good buy and I uh, didn't have a use for it, but thought it was something I could use. And what it is, this is in a wooden case, but this is a, 24 inch stare it. Uh, let's see what number is this? I missed it. There it is. Number 20, 24 inch master precision uh, square. Amazing. <laughs> this this thing is. I don't know, it probably weighs seven, eight pounds. Uh, I mean, this is, this is an absolutely an amazing um, thing to send along, Joel. I really do appreciate it. It comes in a, a wooden case here to protect it. Um, it's in fabulous condition. Um, I, need, I, I don't have anything to, to check it with, but uh, I'm sure it's in pretty good shape. Uh, Joel actually looked online. You can order one of these brand new from Starrett. Uh, go look up the price for a 24 inch number 20 uh, precision master square. And uh, <laughs> these things ain't cheap. Um, now, granted, he did pick it up for a really good price. He told me what he paid for it. I don't remember offhand and uh, not going to say. But um, anyway, uh, Joel, thank you so much. Um, you know, I said in a video not too long ago, I was need I was kind of looking for some larger squares uh, because I've, I've needed some larger squares uh, a couple of times. Uh, but when I was thinking large square, this this was uh, this is a lot bigger than what I was really thinking of. But I can really, really, really see uh, where something like this is going to come in so handy for doing all kinds of things in the shop. Uh, setups and checking things for squareness. Uh, this is really an awesome gift. So thank you so much, Joel. Uh, you, you knocked it out of the park, buddy. Uh, I appreciate it so much. Uh, Joel also helps out over on the vintagemachinery.org website, which uh, um, I run, uh, which has all kinds of uh, publication reprints and information on machines and what have you on there and uh, he's one of my volunteers one of my faithful volunteers on the website that really kind of helps do a lot of administrative uh, task and uh, so Joel you're, you're a great great friend thank you so much uh, for for doing this so the next box here comes from uh, John and Jane uh, Hanrahan uh, from Kingston North Carolina uh, he sent a little note along, he said basically that uh, he's not a machinist or woodworker, but he likes watching the videos, and he doesn't have anything really related to the shop that he can send along, uh, but he still wanted to do something to show some appreciation. So he uh, is in the business of making, I guess probably amongst other things, but he makes uh, custom coffee mugs, and uh, he sent me a pair, I hadn't even opened the second one yet, uh, but he sent me a pair of uh, coffee mugs with the VintageMachinery.org uh, logo on it. Matching set here, his and hers on both sides. A very nice um, 
ceramic coffee mugs. So John, thanks a lot. This is really cool. Um, I'll uh, put these in the kitchen and use it while I'm uh, on the computer, <laughs> editing videos and watching videos, spend a lot of time at the computer. So uh, it'd be nice to have a hot cup of coffee or a hot cup of hot chocolate or whatever my uh, poison of choice is uh, for that particular session and be able to drink it from my vintage machinery mug. So thanks a lot, uh, John and Jane. Uh, very much appreciate it. So that'll be a wrap, guys, on uh, this edition of Odds and Ends. Uh, again, apologize for not really having a shop update for you guys this week, but it's, uh, it's frustrating that we just haven't gotten anything done out there uh, the last couple of weeks, or maybe not nothing. We've gotten a few things done, but nothing really video-worthy. Um, still waiting to get the roof on. Uh, I have been promised that they'll be here this week uh, to work on uh, the building, but I have been promised before, so we'll just wait and see keeping my fingers crossed uh, that we get some serious progress done out there because uh, we need to get that project wrapped up and wrapped up soon. Uh, so don't forget uh, to go fill out the surveys for Nathan. Uh, again, the links are down below. Uh, be sure and do that if you don't mind. I would greatly appreciate it and I know Nathan would as well. And with that, uh, we'll wrap her up. Thanks again for watching as always. Uh, leave me some comments, uh, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, we'll talk to you guys later.